Hello and welcome to Courts This Week on Live Law. I am Tanya Pandey, here with the top legal updates of the week gone by. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Live Law and click the bell icon to not miss any updates from us. Let us begin today's episode with the Supreme Court judgments. The Delhi High Court, in its judgments dated 15 June, found that the offences under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act were prima facie not made out against student leaders Atif Iqbal Tanha, Nat- Natasha Narwal and Devangna Kalita in the Delhi riots conspiracy case and granted them bail. The Delhi police appealed against these orders before the Supreme Court. A bench of Justices Hemant Gupta and V. Ramasubramanian issued notice in the appeal and said that the impugned judgment shall not be treated as a precedent until the matter is finally decided. However, the court said that it was not interfering with the bail granted to the accused. The court observed that the Delhi High Court judgment raised questions of pan-India importance relating to the interpretation of the UAPA and said that it was troubling that the High Court had gone on to narrow down the scope of the UAPA in a bail application when there was no challenge to the statute. The Supreme Court refused to pass orders for postponement of final year examinations of postgraduate medical courses in a plea filed by a group of 29 postgraduate medical resident doctors. A vacation bench of Justices Indira Banerjee and MR Shah observed that the dates of exams are to be announced by several universities spread over the country and hence no general orders could be passed by the court. The Supreme Court has observed that an accused has a right of hearing of his application for bail and denial of the same is an infringement of his right and liberty. While observing that the court normally did not interfere with an interim order passed by the High Court, the bench of Justices Hemant Gupta and V. Ramasubramanian stated that it was constrained to pass the present order as they were shocked to see that the bail application under Section 439 CRPC was not being listed for hearing for more than a year. The bench noted that even during the pandemic, when all courts are making attempts to hear and decide all matters, non-listing of such an application for bail defeats the administration of justice. Seeing that the bail application filed before the Punjab and Haryana High Court had not been listed for hearing for this longer time, the court observed that under the prevailing pandemic, at least half of the judges should sit on alternative days so that hearing is accorded to the person in distress. The Supreme Court set aside an order passed by the Punjab and Haryana High Court which had dismissed the petition filed by the father of alleged gangster Jaipal Bhullar who was allegedly killed in a fake police encounter by Punjab police at Kolkata seeking directions to the state of Punjab to get a second post-mortem examination conducted on his son's body. A vacation bench of Justices Indira Banerjee and MR Shah requested the High Court to decide the petition filed by the petitioner on merits on June 21st itself. The High Court had dismissed the petition for lack of jurisdiction since the petitioner's son had died in Kolkata, West Bengal, outside its jurisdiction, and post-mortem had also been conducted by the doctors of Kolkata. Taking note of serious allegations against the Punjab police in the present case and petitioner's allegations that the Punjab police has resorted to manipulation of the post-mortem report, the bench observed that the High Court erred in dismissing the petition on said grounds. While noting that there are serious issues of human rights involved, the court also directed the state of Punjab to make necessary arrangements for proper preservation and storage of the dead body in the meanwhile. The bench of Justices Eman Gupta and V. Ramasubramanian was considering an SLP against a May 24th order of the Karnataka High Court quashing the anticipatory bail granted by the additional District and Sessions Judge Mangaluru to the petitioner, a police officer, in connection with an FIR under Sections 376 Gray and 323 Hurt for allegedly compelling the complainant for sexual intercourse on the false pretext of marriage. The court had also given a direction to the investigating officer to take the petitioner accused into custody and produce him before the concerned jurisdictional court. Quashing this direction of the High Court, the Supreme Court said that they were approving the entire judgment of the High Court except the positive direction to the investigating officer to arrest the petitioner. The court observed that such a direction to take the accused into custody was beyond the jurisdiction of the High Court. The court also observed that whether an accused is liable to be arrested is based upon the decision of the investigating officer, 
depending upon the material collected during the investigation. Accepting the compensation of rupees 10 crores deposited by the Republic of Italy, the Supreme Court on 15th June quashed the criminal proceedings in India against two Italian Marines with respect to the 2012 sea firing incident near Kerala coast, which killed two Indian fishermen. The court has directed the transfer of the amount of rupees 10 crores deposited with the Supreme Court Registry to the High Court of Kerala. The Supreme Court also observed that Republic of Italy should resume its criminal proceedings against the Marines in Italy in terms of the international award and that the government of Republic of Italy, Union of India and Kerala government should coordinate with each other in respect to the disbursement of compensation. Now it's time to go over the High Court judgments. The Allahabad High Court has taken serious note of half-baked gang charts being filed under the UP Gangster Act 1986 that ultimately helps alleged gangsters in easily obtaining bail, thereby threatening the order of the civil society. A single bench of Justice Rahul Chaturvedi observed that in the age of internet, where information of the entire world is on one's fingertips, the concerned authorities are expected to prepare extensive gang charts that will help the court to effectively adjudicate bail pleas. It noted that 35 years have lapsed since the enactment, yet no rules have been framed under the 1986 Act. The bench therefore directed the Principal Secretary Home, Lucknow, and the Director General of Police, Lucknow, to start an exercise to frame proper rules under the 1986 Act, latest by 31st December 2021. The Kerala High Court has granted interim anticipatory bail for a week to Lakshadweep filmmaker Aisha Sultana in the sedition case registered over her bio-weapon remark made while criticizing the regulations of the island administration in a channel debate. A single bench of Justice Ashok Menon also ordered that she should appear before the Kavarati police for interrogation on June 20th as per the notice served on her under Section 41A of CRPC. However, in the event of her arrest, she should be released on bail, the court ordered. In case an arrest is recorded after her interrogation, she is entitled to demand the presence of her counsel as per Section 41D CRPC, the court added. The court has reserved final orders on her bail application. The Chhattisgarh High Court stayed investigation in the FIR lodged against Dr. Raman Singh, BJP National Vice President and former Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh in connection to his tweet claiming that the Congress party has prepared a toolkit to tarnish the image of the country in the foreign media. The court also granted same relief to BJP spokesperson Samvit Patra with respect to the same FIR. A single bench of Justice Narendra Kumar Vyas held that the FIR dated May 19th has been lodged by a political person with political motives. The FIR has been lodged under sections 504, 505, 1B and C, 469 and 188 IPC at the instance of one Akash Sharma, State President of the National Student Union of India, Chhattisgarh. The Allahabad High Court refused to entertain a petition seeking disposal of dead bodies buried near Ganga River at different ghats in Prayagraj, questioning the petitioner as to whether it is the state's responsibility if there is a death in a family. The council had prayed that the state of Uttar Pradesh be directed to perform the cremation according to religious rites and dispose of the dead bodies buried near Ganga River at different ghats in Allahabad as early as possible and to prevent or stop the burial of dead bodies near the Ganga River. The Odisha High Court dismissed the anticipatory bail plea filed by journalist Suman Chattopadhyay apprehending arrest by the CBI in connection with the Chit Fund scam case. Forming a prima facie opinion that is nexus with the Sharda group cannot be denied. A single judge bench of Justice Shatrughan Pujahar observed that the allegation being serious in nature and the offence committed being an economic offence and the petitioner being investigated, custodial interrogation was much more fruitful as had been held by the Apex Court in the case of P. Chidambaram versus Directorate of Enforcement. CBI had, on 5th June 2014, registered a case against Sudipta Sen and several others of the Sharda Group of Industries under Section 120B, read with Section 406 and 420 of IPC, and Sections 4, 5 and 6 of the Price, Chip and Money Circulation Scheme Banning Act 1973. While hearing a writ plea filed by four journalists seeking media access to court's proceedings, 
the madhya pradesh high court orally observed that the high court administration has decided to give them what they want a division bench of justice prakash shivasta and justice virendra singh orally observed that journalists had in fact assisted the court and the e committee of the high court has taken a decision to provide the live web link of the hearings being conducted through virtual mode on its website however the court did add that reporting of court proceedings should continue to be accurate and responsible and that the exceptions as provided under the swapnil tripathi versus supreme court of india case should be taken care of with that we've come to the end of today's episode remember to subscribe to live law to always be on top of the latest legal news i am tanya pande thank you for being with us today i hope you have a wonderful week ahead subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from live law